Hi friends, I am Dr. Harmeet Goyal, your OBS and Gynae faculty. Today I am discussing a clinical case scenario series of OBS and Gynae subject where today I am discussing a very very important clinical case regarding fibroid uterus. Students, those who are studying in the MBBS, they must uh, view this video because this is very very important for your clinical case discussions while you are posted in the clinicals and a case in gynae can be given on fibroid uterus. As far as the PG uh, exam aspirants are concerned or FMG students are concerned, these cases can be asked in the form of MCQs in your exams. Whether you are writing a PG exam, INICET or NEET PG exam or you are writing the FMG exam. So, it can be asked in the image based questions or in the form of a clinical case. So, Today I am discussing about the fibroid uterus. Now a 48 year old multiparous female presented with manorrhagia. Manorrhagia means uh, regular heavy cycles for last two years. So there is a history of manorrhagia. Age of the patient is 48 and she is a multiparous lady. There is also a history of increased frequency of urination for last one year. She also has painful periods, dysmenorrhea, there is chronic pelvic pain, abdominal distension and bowel difficulty. Bowel difficulty can be in the form of constipation or it may, it may be in the form of uh, diarrhea whatever. So it is according to the patient there is bowel difficulty and there are urinary symptoms like increased frequency of urination as well as she has got menstrual symptoms like manorrhagia. Uh, the OPS history is not been given in this uh, clinical case. All treatment she took for controlling the symptoms have failed. That means medical treatment has been tried and it has failed. And on examination, the vitals of the patients were normal and on doing the per abdomen examination, on doing the per abdomen examination, the abdomen was distended and there was a huge pelvic abdominal mass where uterus is increased to the size. This mass is increased in size up to the size of 20 weeks pregnant uterus and this mass which was felt was firm in consistency and it was non-tender. So there is a mass which is arising from the pelvis and it is abdominal pelvic mass which is formed in consistency and non-tender in touch and it is of the size of 20 weeks pregnant uterus. Now what do you think is a clinical diagnosis? According to the history and the examination, the options given to me are fibroid uterus, adenomyosis, endometrial cancer or malignant ovarian tumor. First of all, malignant ovarian tumor, there has to be history of weight loss, there has to be a history of anorexia, which is not there in this case. There may be the finding suggestive of ascites, patient may be cachexic looking and usually the presentation of malignant ovarian tumors, malignant ovarian tumors is around 60 to 70 years of age. So this history is not there. So I am ruling out malignant ovarian tumor. Endometrial cancer usually never present with such a big size up to the 20 week size uterus. Again, this is unlikely possibility. Adenomyosis usually, the size of the uterus is 12 to 14 weeks and it is tender in consistency and there is uniform enlargement. So, which is again unlikely in this case. So, mostly my provisional diagnosis according to this history is fibroid uterus. Now friends, when we have made a provisional diagnosis of fibroid uterus, next step is get the investigations done. So, apart from other investigations like hemogram or other systemic investigation, the most important investigation when you are suspecting a mass to be originating from the uterus or the adenexa or you are keeping a provisional diagnosis of fibroid uterus, the best or first line investigation will be ultrasound, 
whole abdomen and pelvis. Now, why I am getting the whole abdomen ultrasound done? Because this mass is up to the, you know, like uh, umbilicus. Maybe I want to look for the associate, uh, you know, like bowel, bladder, etc. So, I am getting the whole abdomen ultrasound and pelvis done in this case. The report shows there is a huge solid mass approximately 20 centimeter beside the uterus and her blood investigations were normal. So, next step would have been an MRI scan or a CT scan. Now, why MRI is important when there is a huge mass? Maybe I want to rule out the possibility of sarcoma of uterus as well. So, my differential diagnosis might be sarcoma of uterus or it may be fibroid uterus. So, uh, when the size of the uterus is very big, to check or to rule out any feature of malignancy because she has been having these symptoms for almost two years. Okay, so MRI scan is being done in this case. Now, modern imaging modalities like MRI is very, very important. We want to differentiate this mass, whether it is a broad ligament fibroid or is it an ovarian mass or a tubal mass. So, I want to differentiate it from ovarian and tubal mass. So, MRI can throw some light. Okay. So, other important investigation, if MRI is confirming that it is a broad ligament fibroid, I want to check the course of the ureter. I want to check there is any hydro ureter or there is any hydronephrosis. So, IVP has to be done with the consent of the patient that is intravenous pyelography to check the hydronephrosis, ureteric compression, etc. And also, whatever will be the planning of the surgeon during the surgery because there is a huge mass and there is so much of the symptoms for two years and it is also presenting as the difficulty in the bladder and bowel you know like habits there is increased frequency of urination there is you know like difficulty in the bowel uh, habits and all so the surgeon has to be very very careful about the course of the ureter while doing the abdominal surgery in this case so this is an mri scan report showing a very very huge size mass which is arising from the pelvis now, what will be the best treatment in this case? Since the lady is multiparous, her age is 48 years and she has been having the symptoms of menorrhagia for 2 years. She is having urinary and bowel symptoms. Ultrasound MRI scan has done and it has shown a broad ligament fibroid which is on ultrasound approximately 20 centimeters. Clinically, the uterus is enlarged up to 20 week size. So, in this case, laparoscopic hysterectomy is out of the scene. Robotic surgery or vaginal hysterectomy will also be out of the scene because the size of the uterus or you know like this mass is big. Now, since we know it is a broad ligament fibroid and laparoscopic surgeries are not recommended in case it is a broad ligament fibroid. So, the surgery of choice here will be total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy plus the removal of this broad ligament fibroid. So, this is a post hysterectomy specimen which is showing that uterus, it might be enlarged uterus, okay, and there is a big broad ligament fibroid. So, they have removed and this is a big broad ligament fibroid. Okay, so hysterectomy, post hysterectomy specimen shows it is a broad ligament fibroid. So, the hysterectomy was in the form of total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. Course of the ureter was traced during the surgery and the sample after the hysterectomy was sent for histopathological examination to confirm the diagnosis. Now, broad ligament fibroid can extend laterally and it can compress upon the ureter causing pressure symptoms like retention or increased frequency. So, I hope this session was useful to you and I will bring some more clinical scenarios like this. So, stay connected. Thank you.